by using the same sequence of intervals for the construction of the major scale, that is tone, tone, semitone, etc., but by starting from a different note, we'll create different alterations in the key. So if we start from G, G, A, B, C, D, F sharp, G. <laughs> If we start instead from F, F, G, A, A sharp, or better B flat, C, D, E, F. Why play in different keys? Each note has a particular color to it, which the chord progressions and songs inherit. Plus, you can always jump from one key to the other and create thousands of chord progression combinations. If you jump from one key to the other, just remember to play the correct scale. If you are in G major, the F will have to be sharp, not natural, for example. Let's take a look at all of the keys again. We have C major with all the natural notes, then the sharp tonalities that move by fifth intervals, one in relation to the C major scale, and the first tonalities that move by fourths. This is why it's called the circle of the fifths. But what about the fourth then? An inverted fourth is a fifth. The fifth of C is G, so G is the next key. The fifth of G is D. The fifth of D is A, and so on. As for the flats, the fourth of C is F. The perfect fourth of F is B flat, and so on. There are some tricks to memorize the respective alterations of the keys. Like in the sharps, the altered notes move by fourths, for example. My suggestion is, take one day off when you feel like it and just memorize the damn thing. It's not impossible. If you're composing for the guitar, the more alterations you have, the less you can let the open strings ring. Let's take E flat major, uh, for example. We have E, B and A flat. There are three strings we can play open. The solution, either tune down the guitar a half step and a song in E major becomes a song in E B in E flat major. Or you can buy a capo for your guitar, place it on the first fret, and the song in C major becomes a song in C sharp major, so that you don't lose your open string privileges. Let's jump into an exercise to start playing scales in the first keys with a low number of alterations. G major and its relative minor E minor, D major and its relative minor B minor, F major and its relative minor D minor, B flat major and its relative minor G minor. We'll play them in both the first position and the movable ones so that you'll see how easy it is to play in a different key on the guitar. These are all keys with two alterations max, so it shouldn't be too painful. <laughs>
By the way, the first tonal changes can be mixed with the respective chords the scale begins with, the D major scale with D major and so on. Now in the next exercise, I'll present to you four measures in the key of C. The chord progression is one then four. The major seventh chord built on the first and fourth chords of each tonality. For example, in C it will be C major seven, F major seven. In G major, it will be uh, G major 7, then C major 7, and so on. Then we'll transpose them in the other two keys, other than C, G and F, to appreciate the difference of color that exists among the different keys. To me, at least, this progression and melody in the key of C sound brilliant, in G, calm, and in F, sweet. Plus, it kind of reminds me of a mix of Velvet Underground and Eric Satie. Now, instead, in the last exercise of this lecture, we'll jump from one key to the other, which can be pleasing to the ear if the keys are closer among themselves, that is, if they have a good number of natural and altered notes in common. We start in C major, then jump to the key of G major because of the F sharp in the D chord, then get back to the key of C because of F natural. Not too jarring. A key farther from C major will be for example F sharp that has six altered notes. Let's say you played instead a progression of C, F sharp, D sharp, C sharp, C. Radiohead used to have these kinds of progressions. If you want to leave an impression, that's a good option. Now, if you want to write melodies on a quirky progression like this, you will have to use scales jumping from one key to the other as the chord changes take place. We'll use a simpler progression so that you won't get overwhelmed. But the rule applies for any chord progression. We'll use a progression of major chords. A, C, D, F, G. So we'll play the scales of A major, C major, G major, then again C major. Or the relative minor scales, F sharp minor, A minor, E minor, then again A minor. Notice how it looks like how the melody is going to go off key at any moment, but it doesn't. <laughs> I love writing these quirky melodies. 
It's hard to improvise on them because the scale changes all the time and you have to remember which notes the key have in common. You just have to record your progression and uh, memorize the changes unless it becomes second nature. You know, improvising for one or two hours, yeah, one or two hours on it. The harmony of these major non-diatonic chord progressions um, influence the melody. You might have noticed that they sound a little like um, some of the melodies written by Nine Inch Nails, A Perfect Circle, or R.E.M. By the way, you can do the same with only minor chords. That's, that's actually how most, if not all, of black metal is arranged and composed, or even post-punk in some instances. Evil, dark, broody music is composed of mostly minor chords and lots of reverb. Now, on the other hand, if you have a perfectly diatonic chord progression in only one key, like A minor key, let's say you have A minor, C major, D minor, you will play the A minor scale over it and that will be it. But it gets so boring. Play any chord progression you want. That's how Nirvana made music, by the way. Kurt Cobain just played random power chords until they found something that clicked and then put some melodies over it. Yeah, sounds familiar, doesn't it? Don't feel overwhelmed. This is a lot of stuff to take in. Keep studying, keep playing. Keep thinking about it, listening to music with attention, and one day you will wake up and realize that you're finally a musician. That's what happened to me. Now this was the less theory-heavy lesson. For the rest of the course, we'll be jamming with the pentatonic and blues scales, which are very easy to play. I'll introduce a couple of new guitar techniques, like the different types of bands, and in general, mixing everything that we learned until now. See you in the next video.